All right, surface areas of volumes of similar solids. So this is what we went over in the warm-up to fill in the chart at the top of the page. Given two similar solids with a scale factor of A over B, the ratio of any corresponding areas, whether it be base areas, lateral areas, surface areas, is going to be A over B. It's going to be the same. It's going to be A squared to B squared. The ratio is going to be squared to get the ratio of the areas. And remember, for area, the units are given in terms of square units. And then the ratio of the corresponding volumes is going to be I'll write it a little bit different. You can write it with the colon, or you can write it in terms of a fraction, any ratio, or even with the word two. So given the first question, it has um, two similar cylinders. Given the ratio of the radii, we're going to find the ratio of the heights. So let's first compare, if you look at part A, they really should tell you how they want you to compare the two solids. So do you want to compare large to small or small to large? Small to large. So go ahead and find your scale factor or similarity ratio. In comparing small to large, our similarity ratio is what? Four fifths. Eight to ten, or eight over ten, reduces to four fifths. You don't have to reduce it, you can keep it eight over ten. So A is four fifths. Part B, how would I find the height of the larger cylinder? Sean? Yeah? So if I cross multiply, instead of 8 tenths, we could have used 4 fifths, two smaller numbers. But we have 120 equals 8 times h. Divide by 8, and the height is 15. But let me ask you this. In the question, what would I just multiply 12 by in order to get h? So I've been trying to get you to not set up a proportion every time, but if the scale factor or similar ratio is 4 to 5, Nick, what would we multiply by to go from the smaller to the larger? 5 fourths. Five fourths. It's got to get bigger. So 12 times 5 over 4, put this over 1, you could do some cross-canceling. 4 goes into 12 three times, so then 3 by, or 3 times 5 is 15. Okay, either way is fine. And then what's the ratio of the lateral areas? If our similarity ratio is 4 to fifths, the ratio of the base areas, and then we'll do lateral areas, and we'll skip that, is going to be what? 4 squared to 5 squared, yes, 16 to 25. It's not going to change because these are both an area, so this is also 16 to 25. And then the volumes. So it's going to be 4 cubed to 5 cubed Should we take a minute to write out our perfect cubes? So like your perfect squares, what are the perfect cubes? So 1 times 1 times 1 times 1, or 1 to the third is 1, 2 to the third is Eight, next one. Three times three times three. I mean, you probably won't have anything higher than that, but you can reduce it, especially when we have to go backwards. Like, you know how we're undoing a square with a square root? When we undo a cube, it makes it really easy if we can reduce the fraction so that we have perfect cubes. But 4 cubed, therefore, would be 64 to 5 cubed, 125. So the next two go together. It says the cylinders below are similar as well as the cones to the right. We're going to find the scale factor given the ratio of the surface areas on the left and find the scale factor given the ratio of the volumes to the right. So... The surface area of cylinder 1 is 288. Surface area of cylinder 2 is 128. I need to find the scale factor. So I'm going to do 
A over B are the ratios equivalent? Is the scale factor similar ratio the same as the ratio of the surface areas? No, we have to square it. So therefore, to find out the ratio, we're going to have to take the square root. R, 288, and 128, perfect squares. No. So let's actually, so A over B is going to equal to plus minus reject. Let's actually reduce that. Give me an equivalent fraction that does contain perfect squares in the numerator and denominator. <coughs> What's an equivalent fraction to 288 over 128 that contains numerator and denominator of a perfect square? Autumn? So, 9 fourths. Did anyone want to do 144 over 64? Because you divide this by 2, you get 144. Divide that by 2, you get 64. You could do that as well. But the square root of 9 over 4 is then 3 over 2. For the volumes, so our scale factor, I'm going to call it A over B again. We cube that to get the ratio of the volumes. Small to large would be 108 pi to 256 pi. What can we do with the pies? <coughs> Cancel them. So I'm going to end up taking the cube root on the graphing calculator that's under the math button. However, we wrote our perfect cubes up there and these two numbers were not perfect cubes. So what's an equivalent fraction to 108 over 256 that does contain some perfect cubes? So A over B is going to be equal to the cube root of what? So divided by 2, divided by 3, divided by 4 until you get perfect cubes in your numerator and denominator. I'm going to get 27 over 64 is right. So cube root of 27 is? Cube root of 27 is 3. Cube root of 64, 4. Do you ever have a plus or minus when you're taking the cube root of a number like you do for a square? No. Nope. Only when you're taking the square root. Okay? Last question on the front. The length, width, and the height of the prism are triple. We're not actually going to triple them. We're going to use the relationship between the ratio of the volumes and the areas. Describe the effect on. Now, you could triple them and see what happens, find the volume of each. But if you're going to triple your dimensions, what's the ratio? 1 to 3. So what's going to be the ratio of the surface areas? Is going to be 1, 2, 3 squared because it's an area. So this is going to be 1 to 9. And the volumes is going to be 1 cubed to 3 cubed, which is 1 to 27. So the surface area is 9 times as large. And the volume is 27 times as large. So say I was going to take each side and multiply it by 4. How many times as large would the surface area be? Instead of tripling it, say I multiply each side by 4. Well, how is that going to affect the surface area? It's going to be how many times larger? Sixteen. How about the volume? The scale factor is four. It's a one to four. Four cubed 
it's going to be 64 times as large. Okay? Let's draw some pictures. Whoops, this is from the earlier class. <laughs> Let's draw some pictures of your two cones in number five. Cone A and cone B are similar. So scale factors five to two, so you have a larger one and smaller. And I'll put it for the slant height, five to two. Find the surface area and volume of cone B, given that the surface area of cone A, 2,356.2 square centimeters, and the volume is 7,450.9 cubic centimeters. So we're going to find the surface area here, let's call it X, and the volume here I'll call Y. So to find the surface area, who can tell me the equation I would write? We're going to use that similarity ratio. What do we do with the similarity ratio to get the ratio of the areas? Square it. So it's 5 over 2 squared equals 2,356.2 over x. What do we do with the similar ratio to get the ratio of the volumes? Cube it and we get 7,450.9 over y. So this is 25 over 4 equals 2356.2 over x. So I'm going to write how you get x. So we first do this cross product. So 4 times 2356.2, then divide it by 25. Rounding to two decimal places, our surface area is going to be approximately... 5th, what'd you get? Nine, nine square centimeters is right. Five cubed is 125. Two cubed? Eight. So 7450.9 over y. So we do our cross product, so it's going to be eight times 7450.9 then divide it by 125, and that's going to give you y, or our volume. So our volume is going to be approximately what? 476.86 yep, cubic centimeters. 476.86. Cubic centimeters. All right, last one. The surface areas of two similar figures are given below. The volume of the larger figure is given. Find the volume of the smaller figure. So, knowing the surface area with no dimensions, you can determine the volume. So, what am I going to do with this information here? to help me determine the volumes. What's the process? Kelly? Find the ratio. So this is the smaller surface area, this is the larger. It said the volume of the larger is given, so the volume of the smaller I'm going to call x. But from this, do you want to compare small and large or large to small? So small to large, 16 over 100 is equal to I'm not going to use x because that's my volume of the 
Um, I'm using that for the volume of the smaller figure. So it's going to be 16 over 100 equals, I'm going to just use A over B. Now, are they the same? So this is the surface areas. How did I get the surface areas? I was supposed to do what here? Square it. Are those perfect squares now? Yeah. But if you reduced it, what would you get? What's that? Oh, you could also reduce it to not 2 over 5, but another perfect square in the numerator and denominator would be divide this by 4 and you get 4. Divide that by 4, 4 25ths. doesn't matter which one you use. So do you want to use the 4 25ths or 16 over 100? 4 25ths. So then equals A over B squared. So now take the square root and we end up with... 2 over 5 after we reject the negative as our scale factor. Now to find the volume, I take that ratio and do what to it? Cube it, and that equals, again, we compared small to large. So would it be x over 500 or 500 over x? What's that? x over 500, small to large. So 2 cubed is 8, 5 cubed, 125 equals x over 500. So you first do 8 times 500, divided by 125, and that's going to give you your x. So our volume equals exactly what? 32 cubic centimeters.